So it's 6.07. I'd like to open up the meeting. Um, and I have a couple of just small adjustments to the agenda. I realized that when I set the agenda out, I forgot to do the updates and other business part of it. Um, so I just wanted to do a quick update on the library roof uh, repair, which is done. Um, and then just a brief uh, statement about the Efficiency Vermont um, assessment that was done last Friday for different town buildings. Um, do you have anything, Chris, at all? I don't know. No, you're good? Okay. So, uh, uh, public comment. Do, um, this is an opportunity for people in town, um, if they, something isn't on the agenda but they would like to make a statement, uh, this is an opportunity for them to do that. I've got a question. Okay. Uh, in regards to the survey that was sent out. Yeah. Why was it not sent to all the taxpayers? I'm not, you know, this isn't a planning commission meeting and I don't know, really, we sent it to people on the, um, the voter registration list. And it was, it was also a lake association, so it was, it was beyond just tax, beyond just Year-round residents. Yeah. We sent out over, I think it was 735 copies. But not all of them. We should get all of them. Yeah, all the taxpayers. Everybody on the They get all of the taxpayers that are on the voter register list. Okay. Yeah. So if you're not a, a permanent resident here, you're not allowed to vote. Right. Right. No, I'm just curious. I thought I could a handful of that never received it. That our residents yes. year-round? Yes. Are they on the voter checklist? That one. That would be the only reason why they wouldn't have gotten one. If they haven't voted yeah. in like five years for the town. Yeah. yeah. You don't need one if you don't want one. It's we totally up to you. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sit in that corner and face the wall. <laughs> okay. Just kidding. Any, <laughs> any, <laughs> any other, <laughs> anything else for a public comment? So I'm trying to say, can you can you tell us the like if you get in touch with those folks? What's that? If you get in touch with those folks who did not receive it and and showed up, it's the deadline to return the survey was today. Today. Or, or, or today. But if. If you can get in touch with those folks and let them know, then this will never happen again. Oh, well, they, they know about that. Because they were curious as to why they didn't get it either. And they're not renters, they're actual No, they're landowners and they, they own a lot of land. They should have received the survey. Yeah. If, yeah, they're, if they're on the they didn't. I don't know. I just know that they told me they didn't There was a, we just got back. No, that, yeah, they did have some. Mm -hmm. It's strange that they didn't get it. It is. No, I agree. I think we all agree. So it wasn't because they were ignored, it's because they're not on, on one of our registered lists. We use the information that we have. It's what we Yeah, we can only operate off the stuff that we have from the from the registration. So if they get in touch with us, we'll fix it. Fair enough? All right, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. All set. So uh, the next item on the agenda is approving the bills to the town, and the select board will do that by signing them after the meeting. And then I'll, I'll drop them off at the town office. Mm -hmm. um, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes from the August 23rd, 2021 select board meeting? So moved. Okay, I'll second that. Um, and all those in favor? All right. Okay, so here's a copy to, to sign. There's a pen if you need it. Um, next on the agenda is the town clerk's report. I had a resident come in to register three dogs today. Mm -hmm. He said, yes, I know it's late. He says, but my big concern is, is that I have my land posted, no trespassing. And the animal control person went right straight across. And he doesn't believe that is right. Mm -hmm. Was the animal control person responding to a complaint? That I don't know. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have to get hold of the animal control person to get his side of the story. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Are you willing to do that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And we have the checklist challenge. We met on September 1st and we came across 73 names that need to be challenged mm -hmm. out of our total of 749 voters on the list. Mm -hmm. So what will be the process for that, Robin? How, how will that challenge happen? They, they all got postcards and they okay. have to stay on there. Yes, they are still a resident or no, they're not. Mm -hmm. And once it, once it come back and said, no, they're not, we'll have to go into the system and actually change them. Okay. So there will be no longer a Woodbury voting resident. Mm -hmm. And then once that change is made, do you have to notify like the Secretary of State's office or something? I put word on the Secretary of State's link. On the website? Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. And then, I think it was last Thursday, I had a gentleman come in from Bliss Road and he's wondering if the roadside is going to be moved up there this year. Up, up That's still? On, on oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, I've had a couple calls about the roadside mowing, too, and I'm just telling them that the road crew is busy fixing the roads, but they'll get to it when they can. That's kind of what I've told them. There'll be a lot of that in this fall later on. Yeah, yeah. And the record, the land records are still coming in steady, and mm -hmm. I'm so far keeping up to date with it. So. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah. And then the big one is we received an email from Sam Hill, Sheriff Sam Hill today, and they lost their full-time patrol deputy, mm -hmm. which means they will not be given us the same coverage as what they had been. Right. And when they have staff and that's available to come out and patrol, they will come out and patrol. Mm -hmm. yeah. I had talked to, it wasn't Sam Hill, but it was someone um, after one of our select board meetings where people were wondering what was happening, I think it was shortly after we signed the contract, and they mentioned that they were losing staff, which seems to be true of both, you know, that happened to the Harvard Police, it's happening to the State Police, um, and, you know, I had requested, I think it was after complaints, yeah, it was after complaints about speeding around Woodbury Lake, um, and they said that they, the best that they could provide us was three hours of traffic control a week. Um, so I gave them the times that we had discussed at the select board meeting to try to be there. Um, and whether this is an, and I was told then that they were short staffed and that they were anticipating losing another um, deputy. Uh, and that may be what, yeah, the, yeah sounds like yeah, they did. Got to go to Tennessee. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, that's just the state of policing in the state. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's understaffed, so. And that's all I have. That's it. Any, any questions for Robin or any guys have? Maybe you're out of Okay. So, town treasurer's report. Mm -hmm. So, for the last three weeks since our last select board meeting, um, Payroll totaling $15,405.24. Accounts payable $79,344.46. We had for electronic transfers into our checking, totaling $88,192.20, breaking it down um, $85,000. $85,756.20 is the ARPA money, which is our second, mm -hmm. second installment from the county. Okay. So it's our first installment from the county and then the, right. okay. and then the, our other the installment was from the NEU, which um, stands for something. I have it written down here somewhere. But. Um, other two deposits we received uh, $2,249 that was for the Planning Commission mm -hmm. uh, and then $187 even that was part of 
property tax adjustment. Um, so cash receipts in $267,565.86, which was a breakdown majority of property tax payments. We had some land recordings, marriage license, land postings, um, copies at cost. Uh, delinquencies over the last three weeks, we took in $4,336.50. Um, and also in the last three weeks, I transferred 323000 even over into our money market from our checking. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so I've given you an updated, as far as the select board, um, delinquencies. Right, that's here somewhere on the, yeah. And I have a statement, balance sheets, um, I was telling Michael, where you see it from, which is your last piece of your packet. There is an item number 17 now, which is the ARPA money. That has which I saw. Mm -hmm. So have you any motion for the school as far as the rest of that? No, um, I, I'm going to get a hold of the principal, and I think before we give them any of that money, uh, we need to um, work out an agreement with the district school board. So I'll, I'll be initiating that. Um, we'll have a written agreement um, that's signed by both parties, um, and uh, yeah, so that and that'll probably take a little bit of time. Um, yeah, we do have a brand new principal. Yeah. A, a very, a great principal. She's great. Yeah, she's great. But yeah. she, she doesn't have this in her purview just yet. Right. She's been active with the, the uh, outdoor classroom group that's been meeting. Um, in fact, she's kind of the leader of the pack with that. Um, but I will be contacting her and, and then um, probably meeting with the, the union school board to to work out some kind of agreement between the town because because this, this building that when it gets made it'll be done it'll be kind of a collaboration between the school and the town and both the school and the town will have use of it uh, into the future and i'll make sure that that's right understood so it'll probably be part of the lease that we have with the school and, yep. and the school grounds yeah, at some point yeah. so that's it for me mm -hmm. there's no questions and then um do you want me and then I found during uh, sending out tax bills that mm -hmm. um, there was a glitch and a miss in one of right. the town properties. Right. Yeah. So that's. Go into that one. Yeah. So that's tagged on. I tagged that onto the town treasurer's report. It's. Um, and it's my understanding. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is that. Um, the listers, I don't know where, I don't know who they taxed for the old store property that the old store that's no longer here. That's now town property. But somehow um, it was an oversight um, in the town. It's still to the town of the period. Okay, so basically, yeah. So um, so it was a mistake in the in the tax, you know, the tax statements. Um, and we talked about this um, at our last select board meeting. T usually, if there's uh, a mistake or a challenge to um, a tax bill, um, there's a process uh, where they meet with the zoning board of abatement, and the pr property owner makes their case, and the abatement board hears it, and there might be some back and forth discussion, and then there's some type of decision uh, made. Um, and in this case, uh, because basically the town was taxing itself on its own property, um, there is another process in lieu of abatement. And I'm going to basically read, um, this was found out after our meeting, our last meeting, um, where we discussed how we were going to deal with this. Um, and uh, Robin and Brandy found some state statute on um, this. So I'm just going to read what they, um, what they found and what was printed out. Um, so it's basically a correction of a lister error. Um, so there is another process in lieu of abatement that towns could use to accomplish many of the same purposes as abatement. In 32 VSA section 4261, the listers may correct obvious errors in the grand list with the approval of the select board before December 31st of each year. 
Many situations that look like they might have abatement as their remedy, such as double entries, double or overpayments, and payments on property belonging to another, can be resolved by a visit from the listers to the select board, and we have one lister here with us. Um, so long as the listers agree that these are obvious errors, the board of abatement ought to be used for contested abatement issues where the listers object to the claim of the taxpayer. So the town isn't objecting about this at all. Um, it's just, it was just an oversight. Um, and I think if we hear from Bob that it was a mistake by the listers, the select board has the authority, according to uh, this state statute that I just read, um, to um, grant the abatement to ourselves. So, yeah, I think that's just one of the minutes that will be off the, uh, it, it, it won't happen again. It won't happen again. <laughs> right. Um, so it's my understanding from this that um, if we have an emo a motion to abate the um, tax, is it an assessment? What, what, what's the proper term for what? The tax bill or tax assessment for, for that parcel, it will be abated. I will have okay. to do a journal entry, so it'll okay. come out of the actual our account abatements. Okay. So that money from the town will go that to clear it to, to the right. So if the motion stated that the select board grants uh, the town abatement on the old school, so the old store the property. Um, that would, for the amount of... The tax bill is right in that, that package. In this packet. Okay, it's here somewhere. $230 and $13. I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So, listers are off the hook. We're on board. Okay. Right. We're done with that. Right. Sorry. No worries. No problem. I've never made any mistakes in my life, so no worries. <laughs> so um, next on our agenda is um, let's deal with the auditor appointment for fiscal year 21. And I want to give just some background on this. Um, at our last select board meeting, um, usually the town has three auditors and they're usually elected at town meeting day. Um, this particular town meeting day, which we didn't have um, in person, it was an Australian ballot, there were no people on the um, Australian ballot um, for people to vote for an auditor. So after town meeting, there was a town resident who stepped forward um, to volunteer to be an auditor and the select board appointed that person. However, um, that's only one auditor out of a required three, so it's like the select board members, um, we had to wait until there was another select board member here tonight because with only one, um, we can't really have a meeting. We have to have quorum, so that means at least two. So we, um, and since our meeting two weeks ago or three weeks ago, um, there has been another, a former auditor, uh, Jane Noel Lorendow, who is, step forward to um, serve as a town auditor till the end of the year, till town meeting day basically, which will solve the town's problem for having auditors to uh, review the fiscal year 21 books. Um, so that's one thing that I would like to have us discuss and possibly appoint um, Jane as uh, second auditor um, so that we can proceed with uh, the uh, audit of the fiscal year 21. And, but I would still like us to discuss um, the alternative that we had um, talked about, um, and this is uh, what was presented to us from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, uh, one of the sort of quasi-governmental entities that we use for advice, um, is that many towns are having, have had similar problems of finding people in town to serve as auditors. And they have chosen to go um, 
uh, and use a professional auditing firm. Um, so they basically hire out the audit. Um, and uh, that could be something that Woodbury could do. That's what we were going to do. We were going to put out an RFP um, for an auditor to, to do this fiscal year. And we would have been pretty lucky to find somebody in time to have it done by the end of the calendar year. Um, but um, one thing, the only if a town wants to make that switch from electing auditors to hiring a professional company to do the audit, that has to be decided by the town residents at town meeting. So um, I am thinking uh, we can discuss it more that this is probably a good agenda item for uh, town meeting this March, um, whether or not the town wants to do that. Um, and I think it would behoove us to send out the, we, we had an RFP already to send out, we kind of put it on hold um, when this other situation uh, became a possibility. Um, but I think it would be good for us to put the auditor RFP out just to get a sense of what it's going to cost the town. Yeah, my, my opinion hasn't changed. We voted to do it. I think we should mm -hmm. still send it out even if okay. it doesn't get done till. We, yeah, we did agree to Yes, I agree. We, 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 we agreed to do it. Yeah. To do it. So, I mean, even but, if we get auditors, they can mm -hmm. finish this year, but we'll do it next, whatever, the, as soon as they can get it done. But our, our initial vote, and this has been three weeks now, yes. yep. was that to we should it. move forward with a professional mm -hmm. audit. Yep. yep. Brandy, do you agree with that? Yes. The a professional audit would, would be useful, yes? I, yes, it would be beneficial if we cannot find town members that will not audit. Right. Um, right. Well, there's a couple things going on. I know talking to some former auditors, that's been a, um, a, 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 a one of the things they've said that needed doing in the right. past is having a, a real audit done outside of the town residence, regardless sure. of this year, next year. Yeah. We, we had put out an audit, maybe was it three years ago, maybe four. Yes. Um, and we were we had it written into the next fiscal year budget, um, and then there were some you know items that came on came up that we hadn't planned on that really kind of pushed up the budget more than we wanted to, so we dropped that. I'm um, just so that. The, yeah. But the article also got voted down, wasn't it? No, that was, it was never. It, was it never like came be, came before. Yeah, just a budget the line item. Yep. There's there's two kind of things going on. It, uh, it would take a town vote to change the process to where it's done by an outside firm. Mm -hmm. I think in that yeah. case you still have auditors, but they kind of just oversee. They oversee it. Yeah. They aren't actually doing it. They just kind of watch what the other yeah. auditors yeah. doing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a kind of separate yeah. d discussion, yeah. I think, yeah. which we have time to do in the next yeah. couple months. Sure. So if we if we were to use the town auditors for this fiscal year, because we haven't budgeted. Right. Or, um, and this, you know, it's not going to be, it'll be ten, fifteen thousand dollars that we'll, town will be paying for a professional on and well with it. So if we, if we have a sense of what, uh, by putting out the RFP, what that was going to cost the town, then we can budget it. Um, right. For fiscal. So I think we should it. send it out and then. Mm -hmm. And see, see what we get. Yeah. 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 Okay. So just changing the wording on an RFP that it doesn't need to be rushed. And doesn't need to be done. That's fine. Yep. Right. This calendar year. Mm -hmm. um, Which we probably would have had a hard time getting done. We, 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 we would have had a hard time. Yeah, I think. We were, kind of yeah. we were on their backs against the wall, but now it looks like we can. Yeah, right. now, we have, we have now we have a breathing, some breathing space to get this right. Yeah. So I'll make the motion that we get Jane on as the auditor okay. until town meeting day. I'll second that motion. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then we will send out the RFP without ever pressing the words yeah. doing. Yeah. Okay, so let's check those two off. Um, any other questions for Brandy or any other um, comments on anything in the town treasurer's report? Okay, so thank you, Brandy. Thank you, Brandy. Let's move on to the town highway report. Well, to start off, uh, we've been working on camera road. Changed eight culverts and done most of the ditching. The last two, last four days, we gravelled from Danny Derkey's over through to the cemetery, mm -hmm. and it's all honed up. Waiting for chloride tomorrow. We've got a little chloride coming in the spring. Mm -hmm. The tractor trailer. 
you know, we're rolling in a lot of gravel, and mm -hmm. that part should be done. This is where I'm working back towards court. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> hopefully, by the end of the month, we'll have it all done. Mm -hmm. So how, how far will the resurfacing go? Will it go to the new quarry road? Are you going to go down the hill some? or Go in from the belt, the quarry road, the old quarry road, yep. all the way to the cemetery over pretty near to the town mountain. Okay. You know what the cemetery is on. Yeah. 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 By what's, yeah. what's the name of the guy we that you're talking about? Greg Lang discussed it and decided that, swamp, that flat out through there is kind of swampy and mm -hmm. it needed to be resurfaced. Mm -hmm. So by pre-buying the gravel, it gives us enough to see how we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. And North Road has been re-graveled out to the end of the class three. Okay. Yeah. So that's when we get done this year. That should take care of the camera road for mm -hmm. a number of years. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, Chuck, do you know why? That's a class three road down to the turnaround for the trucks. There's, there isn't a house along it at all. I, I don't understand why that's class three. I don't either. Never know. Never yeah. knew why. Yeah. Okay. Oh well. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know why it was. It always has been. Yeah. Yeah. It always has been. You're right. Yeah. No. But. But no idea why. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Then uh, on the north road out there, remember I told we talked a lot about mm -hmm. um, the having problems out there with the road being able to take care of. Well, the guy that was doing the work won't go back because she gave him such a hard time, mm -hmm. and they're looking for some gravel out there. Yep. But there ain't no way you can put that wood out there. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I mean it's it's so far out. It doesn't well, really... where they want it is not all that far from where the stop sign is. Yeah. It's only down in there probably 150 yards. Okay. And there's a couple of, but a, well, it's hard, they're hard to bottom to fill yeah. water on top. Mm. Yeah, it's a wet spot right there. Yeah. yeah. And if that were, if they were filled in, they could get through pretty good. Yeah. But he called, me, as a matter of fact, he called me just before I come over here. That's why I was yeah. late. And yeah. I told him I talked to you tonight. As far as I know, our class four budget was done this year, but I, it would be. Let's see, I don't know if it is or not. I thought we were wrong. No. I thought we were wrong. I don't think we've used any. I, yeah, I don't think we've really used any. Well, we put two votes um. over in these long. Okay, but that wouldn't, have, the budget is, well, I think it's, it's about $3,000 that we budget. Put it under instead of class There's four. a section called class four roads somewhere yeah. there in the highway budget. budget. Statement that's so we, we still have money for that. Really? Yeah, we do. Uh, the way it's budgeted right now for class four, we're still at. Good, so it may be that it keeps yeah. it on the gravel instead of a class four. So I may have to put your line here. I'll check the grades. If you coded it wrong, that North Road should have been under class four right. instead of underneath. Okay, so right now we've got 2,300 plus. Well, it sounds like some did go out. And a couple loads of gravel would be probably about, well, we need to be $700 out of It's going to eat up that budget pretty quick. Yeah, yeah it doesn't take much for class It doesn't take much for that to get eaten up. We don't budget that much for class four. Um, so there is, well, right now there is money. I don't know what page this is. Okay. Uh, yeah, the staple kind of hit. So there's one okay. right now. Right. So. But if it was if it was done wrong, then chances are there there could be no money. Well, well. So if you put under gravel instead of under the class four. Well, I should. I, I don't know how to get it. I'm pretty sure it's not a class four. Yeah. Oh, okay. I get gravel. Yeah. I'll go through the gravel statements. Well, it sounds like the problem. You can't go into our trucks down there. Yeah, right. actually, nothing has been yeah. taken out of the class. You can't put that in there. That was, that was last year. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's the only one. so, is it because you can't get the trucks down there? We can't put a 10 wheeler. Not a 10 wheeler. Okay, so you could use the low pro? Yeah, you probably could. Yeah. I mean, I would say the 
camp owners that have requested it are taxpayers, and if we have the, we, it looks like we still have money in the budget. Um, I, if there was a mistake in how the gravel was registered for another class four road, was there another class four road that we provided gravel to? Well, the north road. North road. Well, so the one of that has come out of the. For, that's a yeah. class for three road. For the campers. We put two, two loads there. Yeah, yeah earlier this year, I remember you did that. Okay, yeah. so yeah. Two, two loads of gravel, how much would that come to roughly? Well, just, it's just uh, $14 a yard, and you want yeah. 14 loads, so it's yeah. 200 and okay. plus trucking. So about $500 then? Yeah, at least. At least. Yeah. 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 So there's Probably closer to set. Yeah, okay. So there's still $2,400 in the Class 4 road budget for this year. Um, and we could probably should get Greg to re evaluate. I'll go through yeah. and see if there's any. Um, I mean, I see that. My, my feeling, and I actually, I should probably be. Re oh, I don't use that road to get to my camp on Nichols Pond. Um, I don't use any road to get to my camp. It's <laughs> long. <laughs> uh, I, I have to walk. Oh. Um, oh, which is just the way I like it, yeah. actually. But anyway, um, you know, they are taxpayers. I think that we should, if we can get some gravel there and try to fix that spot. Well, we can do that, but um, you can't spread that. So you're going to have to dump it the pile. You're going to have to have something down in there to level it up. Okay. Um, I wonder if uh, Mr. And it won't be the great. Yeah. I wonder if Mr. Frazier, like we do on the North Road where we provide the gravel, if we were to provide the gravel, I wonder if he would have the means to spread it. No idea. Yeah. Um, is that I can the one ask. They call moves? Mm -hmm. Is that the one they call Moose? I don't know. I've never heard him call that nickname. But he's the one they got. Oh, excuse me. That's Moose Bear. Okay. He's the one that's been talking to you about that. You know. He's been talking to me. Ain't nobody talking to me about getting gravel out of that. Oh. Well, that was. Um, he's going. You said. Did he talk to you today? Yeah, but I want. Would you say his name was? Stephen Frazier? Yeah, maybe it was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, he doesn't have any means. He doesn't Because he means. was pretty put out that we were going to cut the brush there. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, he's dealing with the other landowners that are hassling him about that. Right. Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's my feeling that, and I'd be happy to talk to him about this. Um, if we don't have a way of spreading it, could, would the rake work? No. No, the rake would not work. Okay. You'd have to run in there with a loader or something. Yeah. Loader make it in there too, too much yeah. tree. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to spread it small. So that makes so much Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Which is a real pain in the butt to get all the way in there. Yeah. Um, I think the best we can do is tell them we can get some gravel in there. We can provide the gravel and spread it. They'll have to figure out how to spread it out. Yeah. All right. And I'm happy to do that, or if you want to call him back and tell him that, tell him that that's what the select board yeah, yeah. is inside. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll, I told him I'll tell him tomorrow or the next day. So okay, I'll, yeah. Because you know, the problem is the tree canopies and all the branches are you just, exactly. you just can't get anything in there. So lift your body. This you don't need to be. Right. This spot they off that right. or something. Right. This spot they're talking about is probably three miles in on the class four part of the north road. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, mm -hmm. it's and really it's the worst end of the class four. It's yeah. the worst yeah. end of the north part. Another hundred yards from there and the class four road actually so improves to more like the class three. In this well area. actually what's what is looks like the road now is not the town road. Um, the town oh, road most of the, yeah. has a cable across it. There's a little deer camp trailer thing. Yep. And the the road um, runs down to the Cabot road, which has been thrown up they by Cabot. It's basically a mud, a mud pit road. all the way through. Yeah. Um, and the actual town road was used by a logger for skidding logs, and he never did anything to repair it. So um, there's tree branches. I mean, the road, the actual town road, the last part of it, is uh, totally trashed. Right. Yeah. So, and then the other road that looks like the town road was actually, I don't know whether it was E.B. Hyde or somebody else that, that did the work 
to create that road. I don't know the history of that one. I don't know either. But that's the road everybody uses now to get that's into the, yeah. the backside of the East Long or Nichols. All right, so we'll, I think we're okay with providing them the gravel, but we, you know, I think we could just tell them that we don't have the means to get any of our equipment that far in on that class four road to, to spread it. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, the block we put at the end east out mm -hmm. to keep them from cutting the corner too tight. The state's been in touch with me a couple of times. In fact, I'm waiting to hear from them again. They want it more. Okay. Of course they do. Yeah. So we're kind of in a dispute of who's going to do what to keep them from cutting the corner there. Mm -hmm. See, it's in there right away. Because right. they're trying to keep our gravel out of the road. and. Try it now. They don't want you to keep it. There. Yeah, yeah. It's a little, little situation. Right. They told us to do something. We did something. Now it's not but right. Now they're getting ready to pave coming up to there. Yeah. See so the signs are out. <laughs> so we're supposed to get an apron up back. We still. We, we were promised an apron. Yeah. So maybe yeah, they're coming. Yeah. So his recommendation was either we got to put some barrels down there, some of them orange collapsible mm -hmm. barrels or something, yeah. or put some cones in there with stakes in them or something. And I told them that we would be more than glad to come to get the block if they come up with a solution that they wanted to have in that corner mm -hmm. to replace it. Mm -hmm. So, but I didn't want to step out on too far. No, I, I so. no, agree with Chuck's because we've already made an attempt at it. Yeah. And I, I hate more for them more. to still be down there guessing at what they want. No, no, that's not what we want. So tell them to put in what they want. It's exactly. in there right away. Mm -hmm. I, 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 it's in there right away. So yeah. I think they should be responsible. <clears throat> yeah. Either that or tell us what they want, want and then we can do it. But yeah, if the they plan, give us it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, but we've already done something. I mean, I right. it's frustrating. And it works. It's it works. Yeah. 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 Do, you, do you think with that apron um, that they promised to put in that it would help with the uh, the erosion issue right on that corner where the gravel does run out on? It'll help a lot. Yeah, okay, yeah. We've got the, the gravel part of the road up the hill where the culvert is. We've got the road slanted towards the culvert. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as much water as we can possibly get to the culvert is going into the culvert. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, all right. Okay. And <clears throat> you hear any more about Lake Road? I have those. Uh, I think I sent the forward the email on to you. Um, Allison Thomas has to. They do have to put it out, um, kind of like an RFP, a bid for it, uh, according to the state agency that she has to deal with. So she just said to be patient and um, kind of go through that process. I don't know. It sounds like they're probably going to want us to submit a bid too. Um, but, um, and I'll, I'll ask her that specifically, um, but, so basically she has to go through the, the hoops with the state requirements um, to have any work done on that road. Um, and, uh, and whether or not, you know, they're gonna want a, a, a formal or informal bid from us for what, for costs or not, I'm not sure, but I had, she didn't mention that. Um, so, um, so I guess we'll just wait and see. She said she would be in touch with us. Okay. Yeah, so. And the other thing I was wondering about was the survey up here on the hill. Yeah, um, nothing has happened with that yet. It would help, um, I think, if we could stake out where we want that to be. And, and I guess we should probably figure out how we want to go about um, Selecting a surveyor, whether we put together. Who was the last one to use? Well, for the um, old Quarry Road, um, we used. It's a woman who lives in Cabot. Um, I can find her name. I don't have it in my memory right, right at the moment. Just call her and have her. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us which things it'll cost. We wouldn't go lay that out. Yeah, we we could get. I mean, she she was recommended to us to use. Um, you know, she has all the equipment to have put in all the information that the state mm -hmm. requires for She did a good job on the last one. Yeah, she did a great job on the last one. So um, if you could stake it out, I will call um, the, the person that did the surveying um, at the top of the hill here, um, and she could give us an estimate of how much it would cost. 
We'll just yeah. try and get it done. Yeah, yeah keep yeah. that moving. And then the next week I'll have that done. Okay. It'll, it'll be a, a chunk of money. It won't be cheap, I don't think right. so. And again, we haven't budgeted for it, so. But we have, well, we have all the right players. We do, we do, have, we do have some solved. extra money that we well, can well, use. So you can keep the ball rolling. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's on my list, but it's kind of on the bottom right at the moment, but I'm getting there. Okay. <laughs> and I've got one other piece of news that I don't know if you'll want to go into executive session over. Well, I'm aware of the news, and I think maybe just sharing the news for tonight. Okay. And let's plan on executive session at our next meeting to uh, discuss it a, a little bit more thoroughly. Okay, well, announce it then. Yeah, go ahead and announce uh, I think it's... Oh, no, you. Oh, well. <laughs> Spit it out. So if, if I'm incorrect in anything, correct me. Um, so um, I became aware last... Was it Monday? Friday. Last Friday. Friday. That uh, Greg Adams... Um, one of our full-time Rota employees will be uh, retiring from the Woodbury Road crew on December 7th. <laughs> Second, okay. So, um, so, and at this point in time, um, the Chuck and um, Greg Parkhurst have talked to Tim Neal, and he has agreed to come on um, to take his place. Um, Tim will be... Well, he agreed. I talked to him afterwards, and he agreed to come on as an on-call person. As an on-call person, right. So that we don't have to have him five days a week, setting the garage doing nothing. Right, yeah. If there's a snowstorm coming, we can call him, and he okay. will be ready to go. Yeah. That's what he told me. Okay, yeah. And he's been filling in as a sub different times also. Uh, he worked last Friday, he worked today, and he's going to work tomorrow. Yeah. So, oh yes, we should have a, because yeah, we got to know if he's filed his paperwork and all that. Right, we don't have it yet, so yeah. that's going to be some stuff. Yeah, so yeah. we'll plan that for next meeting. Yeah, yeah, so we'll have an executive session to talk about this. Okay, later. and one other thing, and I think it's the last thing I got, is that today we hired two gravel dump trucks. To draw gravel. To haul gravel on with cattle. And we're going to have one of gravel trucks tomorrow because we broke the spring in one of our trucks today. So we can get it. Well, actually, they must have a cranberry mineral. Put gravel on cranberry mineral. So I don't know what you want to do after that. But when we get back to the cabin road to Hong Gravel, it would be nice to have trucks enough so that we can get it done. Mm -hmm. I'd like to have this whole thing wrapped up in September. Right. I think um, as long as, you know, for the cabin road, we can cover the costs of the extra trucks um, under the grant. Um, for other roads, uh, we'll have to come up with um, whatever whatever costs those are. So just, you know, be aware of that. I'll take you $5 now. Yeah, just be aware of that and, and you know, use them if, they're, if it's necessary. That's fine. But yeah, I think you've got the judgment for that. So. Yeah. Well, the thing that's happened is we've got the 3,500 yards that we pre-bought. Yeah. And we can leave it out there, but he's Dana's afraid that his people that work in the pit mm -hmm. may end up selling it to somebody else. <laughs> selling so it twice. So instead of us trucking it and stockpiling it, I'd like to put it right on the road. Yeah, no, I, I, I think well, that's good. Please don't double charge it. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, because I, that, that that's, the, the, that's, the, that's the cost right there. Right. Yeah, I, I, I think your judgment is good, Chuck. Right. You know, you do what you gotta do and just try to stay within budget. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. You know the drill. Right. <laughs> we have been getting this extra money from the state um, from the pandemic. Um, I think it's about eighteen thousand dollars now that we've received. So there there is a little extra money to, to play with. Well, we won't get crazy. No. Right, but he just doesn't have enough vehicles to get the gravel. I know, I, under, I understand that. Yeah, right. yeah. Season's yeah. getting short. Yeah, we're running out of time here. Yeah. So if we don't get it in, so we About seven back, weeks from now, things could be quite different. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I don't, I don't want to put lady gravel down and have to cut it off that right. come to money. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. Mm -hmm. But I won't pay attention to it. Okay. Well, we and we do have some extra money, so it's not a it's not a. <coughs> okay. I guess it's all like that. Drawn yeah. and put on the road. Yeah. Right. That's it. That's it. Any okay. questions nope. for Chuck at all? No. Nope. Seems like it's going good. Yeah. Thank you. Okay.
Okay, so next on the agenda is a library trustee uh, appointment. And Stephen Murphy is, is a library trustee. He's here to um, he lasso okay. somebody. Give us give us the the um, skinny on that, and um, so I'll give you the floor, Stephen. Thank you. So I'm here on behalf of the board, board of trustees, to recommend that the select board appoint Woodbury resident Mark Curran to serve as trustee in one of the two vacant positions on the board. Mm -hmm. And to give you some history on on this recommendation, Mark from 2005 to 2020 worked at Redbud Public Library in Clear Lake, California. He worked as a library technician and assistant. In 2020, he moved to Woodbury, and he is a neighbor of Sarah. She's the acting chair of the board. And Sarah asked if he'd be interested in, in serving. So he attended our meeting on August 23rd. And we talked to him about his experience in working at the library and his skills, and about his experience moving from California to Woodbury. And he's willing and enthusiastic to serve the community and to make some connections. So the uh, the board, the board agreed that we would recommend him, and then we formalized that at our meeting on August 26th. Mm -hmm. And it's based on his experience working in the public library and his willingness and enthusiasm to mm -hmm. serve the community and, and make some connections. So. Great. So would this appointment go until town meeting day of this year? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's how they all do until the next yeah. available okay. election cycle. Yep. Yes. Okay. All right. So I'll make a motion for Mark. Mark Curran. Mark Curran as a library trustee. Mm -hmm. yep. And I'll second as a library temporary trustee. Mm -hmm. yep. Any other questions or discussion about the motion? Okay. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah. Glad you found somebody. Yeah, yeah. sure. <clears throat> All right. So next thing on the agenda is a digital projector possible purchase. So a little background on that. Um, at our last select board meeting, we used a digital projector here that Skip Marcassani um, had acquired. It was kind of an outdated uh, used projector. Um, and it worked okay for our meeting. It has not worked okay since. So you broke it, okay. Well, yeah, I think it did. Happen. Probably I'm the one that broke it, I don't know. But, but anyway, we've tried to use it at a couple of the Planning Commission uh, meetings. Um, and it did work at the, the first uh, hearing that we had on the town plan, but it took both skips, Skip Lindsay and Skip my own parties, two work. and a half hours to get it to work. Oh yeah, okay. And then we had a, another a planning commission meeting um, last week and it wouldn't work at all. Do you have a price for a new one? I do have a price for a new one. Both skips have recommended um, a particular um, type of projector. I looked it up on <coughs> the um, computer, it's about $600. So moved. Okay. So that you're easy to please with broken things. All right. Um, any discussion on the motion at all? Um, I'm sure we can. I, I looked in the, I think in our general budget, we have a computer which we haven't spent any money yet on. Um, yeah. It's so, just that you shouldn't be messing around things for two right. hours. And and I, yeah, and I think it'll be, you know, your time was already. Yeah, you, you people's at, time is too bad. Half that, half that price. But, right. And the, actually, the one that they recommended just so that we. It's a ViewSonic M2E. Sounds perfect. Yes. Right? <laughs> right? It must be wonderful. So, and I think it, I mean, it definitely is a pretty handy tool so that we can, you know, if we're looking at something, we might be able to hand out paper copies, but if we can just Put project it on, it on the wall. wall, then everybody who's at the meeting can see what we're talking about. So, um, and this would also be used by the library. So, um, you know, we would probably keep it at the town office, but if there's an event in the community room where, because that digital projector is pretty outdated too. Um, so it's this was 15 years old. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, it still has a crank, right? 
<laughs> it, no, it, it basically does. I mean, it's you, like you the next light the candle yeah, and that's the fan keeping the, the bulb cool and all does that. Does it come with a hard carrying case? I don't know. It's probably a good idea. The one that, that we looked at initially comes in a, it's not a hard case, but it it's is. A soft case. It, it's a soft case. I have one that's in a soft case. It it's works like right. a soft case mm -hmm. that has a back. Yeah, it's all padded. It works good. Okay. Um, but we could, we could upgrade a case without a problem. And it'll cost us another hundred bucks. Maybe it's worth considering. Uh huh. I'll yep. amend my motion if that's what makes everybody happy. Yeah, that. I, I think it's probably a good idea. If it's going to get lugged all over. It's going to get used, yeah, and lugged all over. So the turkey, I think so we'll raise it to seven. We could make a rigid, we could get a rigid case for it. Okay. Right. Which I don't think is a big deal mm -hmm. to do that. So we have a motion on the floor. Any more discussion at all about this? Um, so all those in favor of purchasing a ViewSonic M2E digital projector for the town and the library. With a hard case. With a hard case. Uh, indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay. Good idea. All right, so we'll, we'll get on that. If you broke the last one. Okay. Yeah, keep me away from it, I guess. Um, okay, so that's that. Uh, Okay, American Rescue Plan Act, which is what ARPA stands for, and we've been using that term tonight. Um, so, uh, a brief kind of um, background on this. This is uh, the American Rescue Plan Act is, uh, was passed sometime in the recent past, and it's to, basically it's going to pretty much every municipality in the country um, funds to, um, either offset some concerns or shortcomings that different municipalities dis discovered during uh, the pandemic. Um, so there are particular things that the money is earmarked for. Um, and uh, there's kind of some gray areas around that that we have discussed at, at some select board meetings. Um, and it's basically the town is going to be receiving um, four uh, payments, four installments. So we've received two already. Um, so initially, um, uh, we were told that we would receive about two hundred and sixty-three thousand. Let's call it two hundred and sixty-four thousand um, dollars. And then there was uh, the federal government uh, was trying to disperse the money through uh, county governments and. Uh, the state of Vermont does not have county governments. We have county courts, but not governments. So we were, for a while, we were gonna lose all of that money. Um, but uh, our US uh, representatives and our governor and who knows who else uh, finally convinced the federal government um, that county government just doesn't happen in Vermont and, and maybe they could to uh, look at um, doing this a little bit differently in Vermont. Um, so, and finally, they were able to convince the federal government, uh, US Treasury, I think, to do that. So, um, the other, so we're, we're receiving four payments. Um, one is under what's called the NEU, which stands for a non-entitlement unit, which is basically a term that the federal government has come up for any local government that serves less than 50,000 people. So Woodbury is, is a non-entitlement unit, for case you didn't know that. Um, and then the other money is through the county, what's, what's called a county payment. Um, so we've received one payment for the NEU um, money and one payment for the county payments. And then next year we will receive um, a, one payment from the NEU and, and one payment from the county payments. So, the first payment um, with the NEU was $46,219.64. The first payment for the county amount is $171,512.40. Uh, and sorry, that's the total. Um, so the first county payment is $85,756.20. Um, so what the town, um, what we need to do now as a town is um, meet as a group. We'll probably have a special um, town meeting or informational meeting. I mean, we could warn it as a special town meeting or 
We need to come up, town residents need to come up with what we want to spend this money on. Um, and the, one of the, the, what they've listed, um, and there is a, a printout on the table there if, you, if people want to follow along with this. But, um, so, um, so it, it, I'll just kind of go through this. That'll help me explain it without making it more confusing than. Um, so basically, they're, um, they'll be looking at the uh, municipal plan, which is another word for town plan um, for future investment. Um, and the planning commission is aware of this money and has, uh, you know, been. Uh, there are parts of the t uh, town plan that are addressing possibilities for um, for this funding, um, but basically, um, you know, so what the gov government, federal government, is asking is to develop an initial list of project ideas from your municipal plan goals and strategies. Consider what's changed. How do these needs? connect with the four ARPA eligibility buckets, um, which I wish they had listed those too. Um, I think it's just the bullets. So yeah, so what they're kind of wanting us to think of as municipal priorities are to improve drinking, waste, or stormwater infrastructure, build out broadband, strengthen the village center and business economic resilience, um, improve certain outdoor spaces and also look at uh, further child care goals. Um, so these are kind of bullets that the federal government is uh, asking um, the town to spend money on and then there are other specific items that we are not allowed to spend the money on which is not listed on the yeah, at the bottom, match it, other federal yeah. funds, pensions, infrastructure, not directly related to ARPA. Okay. Or rainy day funds, financial reserves, or outstanding debt. Okay. So. Well, the other caveat of three years from now, they're going to come in and audit you and tell you if you got to pay the money back. Right. That's the dangerous, that's the shiny bullet on yeah. this thing. So that, that, that is the, what Paul said is true. They have, um, rather than a town coming up with what it wants to spend the money on, um, and then having that approved by the federal government, they will approve it after the fact. So if there's something that we <coughs> spend the money on and they disapprove of it, then basically they want their money back. Um, so it, it's a really it's dangerous. really a kind of an asinine way to do things because um, they've already given you money, right? Maybe. So, but we we do have the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission and the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. They have been um, tasked by the state to provide guidance to municipalities um, on what to spend. You know, if if the things that we come up with are eligible or not, um, and whether they'll be and to answer for whatever decisions happen after the fact, I'm not sure. Probably not. Probably. But anyway, we, we do have some um, kind because of their bullet points are under two. Yeah, you've got respond to public health emergency and the econ negative economic impacts, premium pay for essential workers, revenue replacement, mm -hmm. and then we don't really have water and sewer. But yeah. I don't know about whether we'd ever get any broadband with it or not either. Yeah. Um, it'd be nice, but it's not yeah. What's that? It'd be nice, but it's not <laughs> Yeah. 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 So, um, so we'll be, uh, and I guess, you know, we don't have to come up with a date no. tonight, but this is something that it would be good to have it happen, I think, before the year ends, at least to have an initial meeting. Um, and the, the town plan should be complete um, <coughs> by the end of the year also. Um, One of the thoughts I had had is maybe forming a committee to look at this before we go to a town-wide meeting because mm -hmm. of the, uh, it's a complicated, Guidance. Anyone who's ever looked at federal guidance, mm -hmm. just reading that or getting in a town meeting with people have read this guidance is going to be not really productive. Mm -hmm. um, where this committee might be, um, you know, charged with figuring out what the top priorities are because it's spelled out pretty clearly. Right. And maybe and have them either recommend we have a public meeting or they could solicit. Um, the best. Funding ideas, yeah. uh, and we can because we, we ultimately have to make the decision. I think. Um, and then yeah. uh, apply, but, you know, we could come up with a list of priorities and then the ideas can be applied against those priorities mm -hmm. and against the guidance, which is really complicated. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. If you're really bored, go read it. Yeah. And you'll, be, you'll be bored and then scared to death. I, you know, I like the idea of a committee. I, I do also like the idea of a, a public yeah. forum, um, but having the committee do something. Might, yeah, it might be more valuable after the committee has done something. I, I agree. That, that would be a good, a good um, process Because Chance has read right through this, and he's really good at this stuff, and okay. he's saying, oh, boy, be careful. Be very yeah. careful. Yeah. And I know he mentioned to me that he was going to send some recommendations to a committee, but he didn't you know. You want me to go he, talk to him about that again? I just said, we think that's a good idea. I was just saying that we could start that role. We don't necessarily have to follow through with right. it yet, but. We could um, kind of ask um, if there are people that would like to be on this committee, and then perhaps they could meet uh, with um, a rep from uh, CDRPC and VLCT, right. and, and they could work out. Because then the thought would be that they could bring this, what they've come up with to us as the mm -hmm. board, and then we can apply it to the priorities that we create. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they're going to have those priorities too. And that mm -hmm. might be a better process, which you don't have too many hundreds of people involved in it that yeah. might not have read the paper. Yeah. But you get what I'm saying? I'm not trying to put anyone out of it, but if you're not going to read the guidance, it's not yeah. valuable to be in the process. Well, I think it would, I know, I, I do like the idea of a committee. I also would, a public hearing or just a public forum, I think would. And with, you know, with people from the Regional Planning Commission, the LCT, to, you know, if somebody comes up with an idea and, and the committee or if these two entities are aware that it doesn't really qualify, I mean, they can say so. And sure. Yeah, and I'm not opposed to that at all. I just think at the beginning of the process, you might want to just control it a little bit by having mm -hmm. the No, I agree. I think, that, I think that know what good. they're doing. And then there could be something that could be presented in a public forum. So I can talk to Chance if he's got some names and maybe submit them to us. Does that mm -hmm. work for people? Work for me. Sure. Or, I mean, yeah. And then yeah. we can just appoint this committee if we decide to do that. I, I'm just throwing it down as an idea because I've been yeah. banging my head around on what exactly to do with yeah. it. And I don't think necessarily we have to appoint these people. It could be just kind of an ad hoc committee like the folks working on the town hall. But it kind of takes it off our plate too to have to deal with it directly. Right. Until they've got Well, getting a recommendation from those people would be a really useful Yeah, to helpful to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we can work on priorities with that committee so they know what we're looking for. Yeah, it's not like they have to be on the I know for me it's just going to be important to go down through that guidance and the top priorities and the guidance having dealt with federal stuff, those will want to be our top priorities because mm -hmm. they're safe. Mm -hmm. So we aren't going to be sitting here explaining why we've got to borrow a quarter million dollars to, to pay back because yeah, yeah, yeah. we spent yeah. it inappropriately. Yeah. Then we'll all be hanging on up in a tree over there in all tarred and feathered. That would be me. <laughs> we'll be we'll be joining you. Yeah, it's gonna be all of us right there. Sorry, Brandy, you're not gonna be by yourself. Yeah, we wouldn't. You wouldn't be by yourself. That's just a nervous factor. No, that, that right? sounds like a good yeah. way to move forward. So you'll talk to I'll talk Chance, to Chance. Yep. Chance about that since he's the EM director. Yeah. And what kind of time frame are we thinking? I mean, we have quite a few years to spend this money. Um, I think it's three or less. Twenty six is when it has to be spent. Yeah. Oh, well, so we have more. Okay. So we have a few years. Um, and then you want to be too slow either because you yeah. want it to have the impact it's supposed to have. Yeah, we want to have it. Yeah, we want to yeah. actually have so it. Some of these ideas may stick out pretty easily and we can fund them yeah. quite quickly, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. We wouldn't have to wait. We might have yeah. to do some of it this year and yeah. early next year. Right. So, so what if we task the committee to meet and um, maybe come up with some um, ideas? We could, we could do a public forum for people just to submit. Yes. Ideas of the committee. Yeah, well, see, what they can do is they can, they can orchestrate that for us. Yeah. And we yeah. kind of take it off our plate, and then we don't have to do it all. Mm -hmm. And that also gets more, what I like about it is it takes the, we have to make the decision, but it, they're bringing that to us. So it's not like we're, we're not mm -hmm. getting input. Because right. we could do that. We could say, well, this meets the priority. We're just going to spend it this mm -hmm. way. But mm -hmm. this said, they can solicit input and then bring it to us. And that, that gives another outside party some say. Right. Yeah, I really don't want to commit to anything unless a committee or the public Agreed. forum has yeah. decided yeah. what it is. Uh, and yeah. we'll, we'll just yeah. be rubber, I hope yeah. we'll just rubber. That's what I hope too. Yeah. Even um, though it says it has to be expended by 2026, it says it has to be obligated by 2024. Yes, yeah, so okay. in my opinion, so, we should obligate it as soon as we possibly can to have the desired result. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we're still right up to our, like dealing with response, we're still right up to our eyeballs on COVID right now here. Right. We're, we're dealing with COVID every single week. 
Yeah. So it's not like it's gone away. It's still a, a high priority item, yeah. depending on yeah. what chair you have to be sitting in. And we could be underwater. Or soon <laughs> too. And we'll have it, it's it stuck its ugly head up in the last few yeah. weeks. So, um, so maybe we could. Um, when you talk to Chance, maybe task him that the committee to, may, to try to have something years. by close yeah. to the end of the year, and either the beginning of the new year yeah. or maybe before. What, what I think we'll do is we'll get the names, see if Chance can come up with the names, right. and then we can sit down with the committee and just say this, we'll this is our expectation. Mm -hmm. And then move forward. Yeah, and yeah get it done. That. Okay. Because I'd like to see us deal with spending some of that money, find an appropriate way sooner than later. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think as as we get it, so it's going to actually you know, do what, yeah, it, yeah, what it was designed to do. Yeah. yeah. There's some very obvious. There's some high energy targets. Hit, yeah. hit pretty easily, I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll talk to Chance and we'll get back and then we can know how to move okay. forward. Okay. Right here from there. Okay. So, um, so funding changes, town planning. Okay. Um, so next on the agenda, are there any questions about what we've just discussed from anybody here? Any clarifications on this whole thing? Um, for the town of Woodbury, it's a nice chunk of money. Yes. Um, so, um, it almost sounds like playing Russian roulette a little bit for this. Yes, it does. That's why yeah, we want to be very careful. That's why it's scary. But I think there's some of the priorities are very clearly, clearly defined, and I don't think they're dangerous. Right. So I think if those come up, that we can fund them, and you're going to be safe because they're not a guess. Anything in the gray area, in my opinion, we need to stay away we'll from. Stay away from. Yeah. Just I mean, I don't, I don't like know. one example is build out broadband, and right. in the town plan work, almost everybody um, in the survey that was mentioned. That's what people are looking for, especially the people that live off the Route 14 corridor. Um, the further out you live, the poor uh, computer connections you have. And that became obvious for the school, for kids trying to, to um, connect um, during when the school was totally shut down. Um, there are people in town that are trying to start uh, businesses in their home that, that require a, a computer internet connection. Um, and people actually who are looking for homes, that's one of the things, that's like a priority, that's what they're looking for. Um, so that's, that's kind of an obvious one and it's right there in the designate. And the, um, there's some others. But well, the fear with that one though is the, will it actually get here? So my concern is right. the, the broadband people are getting a chunk of money on their own. Right. To what I need to hear to get a yes vote would be, how much money is going to be spent? How many residents might in Woodbury are going to get served? But what I'm afraid of is, and I'm not saying this is going to happen. My fear is they're going to just say, "Well, we're going to suck up two hundred and some thousand dollars or whatever we give them," and right. they can't tell you that's dangerous because right. you could have the feds come in and then go, "Well, you spent it all. They made it as far as you know the first house in Callis. That's all they right. got to. Woodbury didn't get it better. Now you got to pay it back." That's my fear. I don't know if that's going to happen. That's somehow they'd have to tell me that we're going to give 50 houses. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. However, so one of the is. thoughts I had about that is that we're now part of um, a municipal um, entity. Um, I forget the name. The name of it is the acronym is CUD. Yeah, to get get broadband in there. Yeah, to get broadband. Yeah. We're part of CV Fiber. We do have a representative to CV Fiber um, who's uh, meeting with the boards. And I uh, recently attended a regional planning commission meeting where a representative from that C Fiber kind of presented. They're, they're actually working on a plan for the entire area that they serve, which is, I think it's 26 towns, maybe more. Um, and uh, so they're trying to put together a plan of how they're going to do this. Um, But I thought it might be nice for them to come. We can ask you sure. questions. They could present that plan. One of the things that they are doing for Woodbury right at this moment is that one of the things that they need before they can really work on a plan is a pole inventory. So basically an inventory of every electrical pole. A lot. Um, a lot. And um, they, have all the, they have the information from Washington uh, Electric from, um, I think there's a little bit of Green Mountain Power somewhere in the region. The one piece that they're missing is for the town of Woodbury because hardware doesn't have an inventory. So they're basically 
funding an inventory for Hardwick Electric in the town of Woodbury to count our poles. So they'll have that complete bit of information. Um, so that's one step that they're taking for Woodbury at this moment um, to, to try to get to this end goal. Um, but I, I think it would be good. We'll get them. Yeah, bring to them come. in. Yeah, and because we'll, I just don't want to hear numbers. It's you know three hundred thousand right. a mile, and we can't even pay for one right. mile. That's uh -huh. the concern I have. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, that's the chance, and we'll yeah, we'll work on it because I'm we'll definitely on interested in that too. It's just a matter of the details. So yeah. Fuck that looks good. Yeah. So next on our agenda is the personnel policy. Um, Did they review? Really they haven't reviewed it, but they finally came up with what it would cost us for them to review it. And they gave us a date that they would have it okay. reviewed by. So, um, so a little background on this. Um, we've been, we revised the personnel policy um, and sent it to uh, Vermont League of Cities and Towns. They have a, a group of lawyers um, that will do a legal review of a personnel policy. Um, and. Other other policies and ordinances, et cetera, um, for pretty uh, what I would call a reduced fee um, from what a basic lawyer's fees are. Um, but anyway, we, we sent it to them back in May, and we've been kind of waiting for a response. Um, so on September first, I, I finally got one. Um, so they um, to. The time and cost estimate for a legal review of the town's personnel policy would be $750, and it would be reviewed and back to the town by September 30th. So, um, and I mentioned that you know we can't approve this um, until we have a, a public uh, select board meeting, which is what we're doing today. Today, um, so. Um, it's a step we got to do. So. Yeah, it's a step we got to do. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the review. And I'll okay. second it because right. we can't finalize we can't it until it's been else. reviewed. So. Right. Any um, other questions about this? Any discussion on the motion? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Well, it only took two and a half months to get a response. All right. right. I know. Um, so at some point, Robin and Brandy, I would like to sit down with you guys and go over your, your part of that, um, the parts of the personnel policy that will address um, any benefits that you get. Um, and uh, not to change anything, but just to kind of, so I can have that appendix complete and correct. Um, and then I, I'm going to try to find the email from um, the H. Uh, C person at VLCT about this agreement thing that she suggested that the um, that the town clerk and the town treasurer sign. Um, she I think she did give some reasoning for why she was suggesting that. Um, so I'll just send it to you so that you can um, look at that and um, and also if you had questions for her you could contact her and talk to her about it too. So sometime in the near future. Um, We'll try to arrange a, a, a sit down and, and go over that. Okay. Sometime soon. Um, won't work this week, but we can figure out a day that'll work for all of us. Um, okay. Um, so the town hall. Oh, did we did we vote on that? Hmm? No. No. Okay. So. All those in favor of spending $750 to have a legal, legal review from the lawyers at um, the LCT uh, indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay. All right. Good. So next on the agenda is just a, uh, an update, um, series of updates and uh, just kind of a, uh, thinking on how to move forward on, on um, some renovations to the town hall here. So, so the uh, ad hoc committee met last week, um, and the ad hoc committee at this point, um, Robin is on it, um, uh, Mary Jo Llewellyn, Liz Pritchett, a former uh, Woodbury resident who has some experience in, in dealing with historical buildings, is on it. Um, I am a part of it, and Diana Peduzzi is a part I'll of find you one eventually. I haven't gotten okay, yeah. from And actually, you know who they suggested as the best person? Who? You. 
Sure, Paul. You think about just it. just from your it. from your work experience mostly, and and so right, let me let me take it under advice. Yeah. We, we won't be meeting twice a week, probably. Oh. But hopefully, I could add it to the four meetings yeah. I have this week already. Right. But anyway, um, so we met and was basically just trying to figure out. Uh, um, what to, you know, how to, how to create a plan for what we would like to do to the, the town hall. Um, there, you know, now that we're not really able to meet in the town office because um, the space is too tight, um, we're looking at uh, using the town hall more than we have uh, historically. Um, and it is a building that's on the historic reg register. It was built in 1842. It could use some work. It would be nice to um, fix this place up. Um, and uh, it's a long-term project. It'll probably cost some money. Um, hopefully we can uh, you know, get some grants that will help co cover the costs. Um, so, but the first thing that we need to do is figure out a plan. Um, what we want to do and how, how, we can, um, how we're going to do it. Um, so um, I, we were aware, um, we had um, an electrician go up into the attic. There was something that Passive wanted us to fix up there, some, something to do with the wiring, I assume. Um, and he mentioned that there's a lot of bat guano and bird, you know, guano, we'll call it, um, up there. Um, and so as soon as, um, it, this committee heard about that, especially Mary Jo and Liz, who both uh, their work is, um, you know, in dealing with old buildings. So, um, they said we've got to get that out of there before we have anybody else up there. Um, it needs to be removed. Mm -hmm. So they've been making some calls. There are people that do that as a business. Um, I haven't seen any dollar figures yet. Um, but that's kind of what they thought the first step should be, is to get, you know, clean up the attic. Um, and the reason for that is the next step that, um, that they're suggesting is a, a structural assessment. Um, and there are professional contractors that do that. Um, and they would need to get up in there to, um, um, and they're, they're thinking that there is uh, some grant money from the Historical Preservation Trust that would pay for a structural assessment. Um, and that would give us a sense of what needs to be done to the building. Um, we also had an energy assessment of this building and the town office and the town garage uh, last Friday. Um, I just got the report from that. Um, it's pretty brief, but um, I'll send that out to everybody. Okay. It, it was on my computer when I got home from work today. So, um, uh, so that's you know, the, and that's just a, the with efficiency Vermont. That there's kind of two steps that they do. There's a, a energy assessment, which is free to the town, where somebody come kind of comes through and looks at things and gives kind of a, some basic. Um, ideas for what could be done to the building, um, mostly for energy efficiency, whether it's heating, electricity, um, you know, stuff like that. So, um, so we've got some. Yes. Why don't you do a structural assessment before you put money into the? Well, yes, we would do a structural. Well, Earth. no, we need to remove the toxic waste that's up there. The back one apparently is pretty toxic. Um, so um, before we would ask somebody to go up there and you know do a structural as assessment of the, the roof joists or the structure up there, um, according to uh, Mary Jo and Liz, that that stuff needs to be out of out of the building. Mm -hmm. They have suits. No, they don't. They do. Have, yeah, they do have suits, but um, I'm just saying before you come from lunch money. Well, let's see. Well, I guess we'll see how much money it's going to cost to remove it. Yeah. yeah. I bet it's going to be quite a lot. I yeah. bet it'll be a fair amount. Yeah. And if we're going to go to the expense of removing it, 
it certainly needs to be sealed up so that so the bats can't get back in. Right. It used to be 100 or so bats. That, that's there. from the yeah. emails that I've seen, the questions from these different contractors, they're, that's one of the first things they're asking is, is it still accessible? Yes, it is. By birds and, birds and bats. It is, yeah. So, So this contractor could also seal it up. If they so I agree. We need to so. resolve the... Yeah, you got to see what you got for structure. Yeah. My yeah, guess is the structure is probably pretty good, but mm -hmm. you definitely want to seal it up for you, clean it up, and it'll just be right back right. in there. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, I mean, so I think it's kind of a package deal. We do that. We look at the structural assessment with it, and then we kind of mm -hmm. figure out figure out what, yeah, yeah how, what order we're going to do. Yeah. Ten, ten degree, and open, clean it. If you're not going to fix it. Well, I think the obviously the plan is to fix to it. fix it. I mean, that's yeah. Uh, I think I think we need to put some money into this building. Um, and so, um, yeah, I think, yeah, and but that's where you know, is this a gray area? Where this we can is actually one of those gray areas. I don't think we, I'd love it, I'd love yeah. it if we could. The, yeah. That's probably the, the window's really small for that money, yeah. Yeah. So that, that's the they, yeah. they were really smart about it. It's like yeah. this wide, and we could make an argument that we need this building now because of the pandemic for uh, physical and space, that's what for. yeah, yeah, and that's what the money's for, exactly, yeah. So, well, we, I think we probably will. Um, and if our advisors, um, this is the this is the thing. It, it is a gray area. And if we do that, and the, some hey. somebody down in Washington D.C. in his office decides, or her office decides, hey, you know, you um, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. We'll just rip the roof off and uh, we'll call it enough. So I think it's really the work of this committee to put this package together. Right. And we'll have to apply it to this yeah. other committee. And so that, it, that can be one thing that we'll put on our list. It looks scary uh, to, to me, see if we can use some of that. The funding right. part of it as far as the funding. using that. But. Once we get into it, I think we'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah. So um, we'll get some, there are a couple of contractors that are anxious to get here and look up in there and give us uh, an, an estimate. estimate. So we'll have some money figures, um, hopefully by our next meeting, you know, we can discuss. Um, uh, and yeah, so that's, that's it on the agenda. Um, we're, fat, we're good. Any other questions about the town hall at all? Any other comments or? Is it still the need if it's used for one year it reverts to? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's the other. I that's the other thing. Really, the it just says it has to be continually used, used. for town and public purposes. Yeah. Is what the deed says. That's another thing that the committee thought the town might want to look into is actually owning the ground underneath this. Well, we do own it. It has a deed restriction. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. If we own this ground. It's a deed it. restriction. Is it? Do we own the it ground says, or do we own the building? No, we own the ground. Yeah. It says we own no, it we as own the building. Well, but, well, I read the deed. It said if, as long as we keep using it, we, we can we, we own it. If we stop using it, mm -hmm. then it reverts mm -hmm. back to the owner of that building. Well, I think one thing <clears> the committee suggested is that we be clear on whether you know, do we own the building? Do we own the ground? Um, and this condition in the deed, um, whoever is the person that it would revert back to, which is over there. Um, maybe we could get an agreement, or maybe the, part of the whole the process deed is, is in to the actually. Town of his name is what yeah, I'm getting at. Yeah. Before I'm we see. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, you could well, call it, but I think I got a copy. It. It's just it's a deed restriction. So we, our name's on the deed. That's what I'm trying to tell you. We own it. And right. we just we can't ever do anything. If you want to sell it or you want to do anything else, then it reverts. Yeah. That's what it says. That's just like my deed. I can't have a dance hall. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Darn, I thought that was coming soon. So but I think, you know, we should probably look at the deed. Yeah, the new call it's right in the books and, there. And they were you know, the were kind of thinking that maybe somehow the deed could be so that the town owns the building and the property outright before we sink. So what I checked on that a few years yeah. ago. Um, uh -huh. What it would take is the property our, this property owner and that property owner, you just simply write a quick claim deed right. removing it, but the other property owner would have to agree. Okay. So I don't know if that would happen or not. Right. Okay. Because I researched this for that's when I looked at the deed. Because okay. we, we own land. Mm -hmm. Our name's on it. Mm -hmm. That would be the question that government Yep. Yeah. 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 yeah.
could be some of the access. Yeah. yeah, so it, it would be nice to remove that condition. Yeah. It's easy to do if everybody agrees. It's one of those things. Yeah, right. Otherwise, we're going to Because you just simply write two new deeds, quick claim, you're done. But Yeah. Okay. So we'll, maybe we should, we'll look into that. You just have to want the, the, the party party would have to say, okay. Yeah, okay. It sounds like that should be first and foremost for any. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Agree, because I think it's been a cloud for a long, long time, 18 something. Yeah. Yeah, that's the it's original. Called the Woodbury Town Square property. The original agreement in that deed was from the very beginning. Because yeah. it was donated to be the Woodbury Town Square and Town Hall, and as long as you use it for that. Right. So it's been fun. It's a classic need restriction. Yeah. So I just have a couple of quick updates and then we can um, you not go home. So, right. um, so I just wanted to record. Yeah, mention that the library room is now repaired. Um, and the total cost came to $19,200. Okay. Um, so, um, and I did meant talk about the efficiency Vermont assessment already. That was another update on my list. Um, that's pretty much it. Is there any other business that um, people would like to bring before the select board before we adjourn? All right. Motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in any discussion? <laughs> Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Pass me that. Okay.